take two. Hello, and just checking to make sure that the mic is on. It is. So hello and welcome to season two, episode 39 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and I'm having coffee <laughs> at lunchtime. So that gives you any idea how my day went. Actually, I had a fantastic day and I hope you did as well. I'm super excited to finish up the Hello Kitty pattern. I don't know if any of you have been making it along with me, but if you want to before Halloween, know that the pattern is available inside of my school. And my school link is at the top of the chat. So it's, it's a free school. You go in there and it's kind of like a social media site where you can uh, participate and get to know friends inside of there like those that are in the chat right now. Let me see who's in the chat. Hello, Tina from Texas. Mary and Mike, or is it just Mary or is it just Mike from Buena Park, California? And Sharon Kaysen. Hi, y'all. So I'm so excited because I'm also going to do at the end of this video. I'm going to show you how you can make spider webs like you see on my top here on a shirt that you may have that you like how it fits you. And so you make that your Halloween costume every year. And that's what I've done with this top. I loved how it fit and I just turned it into a Halloween shirt. And so I can be any kind of Halloween type of person I want with this top by just what I add to it, like my little hat. Are you guys dressing up for Halloween? Because I really think the kids like it when you open the door and you're playing along. Hi, Veronica. I can't remember where you're, where you are. Okay. So inside of the school, I added some spider web designs and it's inside of the Octi Hoop playlist. I don't know if, where's that, where does that go? There we go. Why isn't the button working? My buttons aren't working. I don't know. Whenever I do this one thing, I, I generally struggle. <laughs> so here we go. So when you go to create with Claire Rowley, it uh, takes you to this main page. If you've already created a profile for yourself, you'll see your picture in the top right hand corner. If you don't, you may not have joined yet, but be sure to join and be sure to set your notifications by going inside of, let's say you click on your face and you go personal settings and that is where you will find your, I don't dare go too deep in this because I have no idea what you might see. I got some surprises coming. So you go to creator groups on the left hand side. It'll look different in your mobile device than it will on uh, a PC. And then you just go to the Octi Hoops because this is an Octi Hoop pattern. And then on the left, you'll see Topics, Free Patterns. And this is where you will find a variety of different patterns. The ones I mentioned on the video, if you got a DVD with your Octi Hoop kit. And there's the spider webs. And then it is a PDF file when you click on it. It opens up and allows you to print it right onto a piece of paper, which works a lot faster when you are not on live at the same time as trying to do something like this. So you're from Alabama. My best friend who isn't with us anymore, her family was from Alabama and so, I always can picture her saying it the way she says it. Let's see. All right. So what I was thinking is I could do like a big spider web on, on this quilt, or I could do uh, several smaller spider webs on it, which 
would be easier to handle, easier to control, and I don't want to have to trace all these designs on, a, on the fabric anyway. So for those of you who are just joining this week and don't know that this already has had two segments to this actual project, and this is it. On the back side of on the back side of this fabric right here, you can see how it's all stuck together. The top and the back and the batting are, are only held on by static cling. This is the bamboo batting. So on the back side, last week there was a whole bunch of our hold light stabilizer supporting the back of the fabric. I've left some of it so you can see that it just tears away and you can use tweezers to make it easier which is what I highly recommend. My favorite tweezers for pulling things off like this because they're flat and they have flex right here to make it easier on your hands. But you can tear it completely away and not see any stabilizer at all. If this were a garment or a quilt that I was making and I was going to sit on it, I would be sure to remove all of the hold light so that it doesn't have a sound when you sit on it because the hold light does have like a plastic sound to it. And what I'm going to use to do free motion because I'm the inventor of the creative feet and these hoops that I call octi hoops is I'm going to use two of the octi hoops to do free motion so that I don't have to push down against the fabric and move with my arms simultaneously, which is very challenging to anyone. If you've ever done free motion, Without our octi hoops, you know what I'm speaking about. You have to push down around the foot and then you have to look around the foot by removing all of the hold light. I don't need to use a foot and that is my favorite way to do free motion quilting is without a foot because, well, there's no way you get a pucker because without a foot and the feed dog interaction, there is no resistance against the fabric. And if you've ever gotten a little pinching and puckering on the back of your quilt, don't blame yourself. It's because you've been taught to push against a hard surface. And when you do that with something that has a bias in it, it, it tends to stretch out like kneading dough on a kitchen counter. I got to take a sip of this coffee or get it off my sewing machine. And did you guys see that I, I brought out my butterfly machine? I got tired of the big machines. And a lot of times people think I only use the large throat machine. Well, this is a standard body of the sewing machine so that you guys can see. This is an added table that came with it. However, this is just really cool to look at and I didn't want to not have my butterfly, the big butterfly shining back at me. I can even take this off at some point. I probably will and show you how I can free motion quilt with just the free arm. For those of you who think that for some reason with the octa hoops you have to have a big flat surface you do not do any of you have any questions nobody's talking are you guys ready for Halloween I'm using two of the frames and on the back side of the octi hoops they are an uneven surface which makes them really slippery when you place it on your sewing machine There we go. So these these hoops slide and they don't scratch your machine because if they did, I would never put it on my hard work, the painting that I do on the bed of my machine. I also plan to finish the binding on this with a alternative to traditional binding because it's faster. And I want to utilize as much as possible the glow in the dark thread that I used to embroider the face of this cat. And for those of you who were not watching the last two episodes, you don't know that this embroidery was done using the octa hoops. And this is quarter inch thick fur. It's very thick fur. You can see the hair, hairiness of the tail. So it's very thick right there. And in order to get the thread to be hidden, we used one of our stabilizers called Cover Up, and it has a panda bear that represents it on our website at creativefeet.com. 
and you can buy it with uh, multiple colors in a package or you can buy it individually in rolls in all of the different colors that we offer. So that is how I was able to embroider the cat. You want to watch the embroidery process of the cat's face? It was, was it last week? It was the first week, wasn't it? It was part one and all of the parts will be linked in the description below. I, I left the cat's whiskers unfinished because I'm going to free motion them in their final stage on this. <laughs> now that wasn't my plan. My plan was before I went live today was to finish doing the satin stitch application of the whiskers on the fabric so that on the back of the quilt I won't have all of that thread showing up. But since this is a wall hanging or a door hanging and people aren't going to examine the back of this, I'm going to just go ahead and do it the easy way, which is free motion with the batting in there with no stabilizer at all. And that's why I took care to remove all of the stabilizer behind the face of the cat. Now this is still going to be tricky because that's fur. That's a lot of fur in there. All right. I think I'm hello, Susan Vetter. Welcome. And Oops. <laughs> oh, the buttons don't always work. It's not my fault. It can't be my fault. So to utilize or work with the Octa Hoops, we can remove the snap-on adapter that is on your sewing machine. And this actually is one of the Creative Feet snap-on adapters. It's what I use on this, this particular sewing machine. Laughlin, Nevada. You're only three hours for me, Susan. I'm going to mute for a second and chug my coffee really quick. Okay, so you can also remove the screw assembly if you want, but you don't need to. If you do remove anything like that, be sure to put it in a safe place so you know where it is. Ugh, oh, I just, I really have been having the best time making this. It kind of looks funny from this camera angle. Things got moved because I filmed something on Friday. Do you guys remember what I was going to do on Friday? Amy's not here yet. She said something to me and she was right. And so I want to give her credit for being right last week. <laughs> she was late last week too. So right now I have a light blue Invisafil thread in the bobbin. And Invisafil is the 100 weight thread. And I'm going to use it with the glow in the dark thread, but I don't know if I want to use blue for the spider webs this is when you guys get to vote Ooh, i got orange i haven't used orange yet oh i'm sorry i walked i didn't have the camera set right so these are the options i also have white and cream but i don't want to use those which of the colors should I use for the spider webs, you guys? I should come visit you in Laughlin. I have a friend who loves Laughlin. I used to go near there with my boat to Lake Mead, but I don't have the boat anymore. No one's voting. This is the color of the cat's eyes. And what Amy was right about is I did use the teal on the kitty's eyelashes or whiskers. So I need to remember that when I do it. Green, green, green. All right. More than one green, you guys win. Just don't let me use the green on the whiskers because the whiskers are supposed to be teal.
Now you can use this thread on a horizontal spool holder. If you do, make sure that the cap that goes on there is wider than the actual spool. If it isn't, make sure there aren't any rough areas on the outside of that spool. If there are, you can use a fingernail file and smooth it out. You want it to be slippery. Sometimes I go as far as to use a clear nail polish over the side of, of a spool when I sand it with a nail polish to get it round and, and get rid of the little cut that they have on there. Sometimes put your thread through. And I've gone over it with clear nail polish to make it smooth again, just so I don't have any thread catching as I sew. Especially when doing free motion. When you're doing free motion, it is the hardest thing for your sewing machine to do. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but we want to have nothing going against us when doing this. Now, this machine, the, the little post I put my spool on, well, it broke off. <laughs> this machine went to a lot of shows. So I'm using my thread dispenser here on the side, and I'm actually going to put it, the spool, on one of the posts, like you see this big spool. There's another one on the other side. There you see it. <laughs> Not much in the scene. Sorry about that. I'll tell you what, Tinkerbell looks so relaxed. I wish you could see her. I started cooking food for my dogs about, oops. Well, this will be week four of making the food, so. And their energy level is through the roof and after she eats, she gets really, really relaxed. That's really funny. Okay, I'm using the Super 9014 Universal Needle, and that is because this is a thick thread. It actually has a little bit more drag than normal 40 weight polyesters. And that, or a top stitch 9014, would also be a good choice. And usually I have my needle out. So you don't have to see me go through this, but I don't know. I got organized when I was doing the patches. It's the first needle though. Yay. So it says super universal and it also says non-stick on the packaging. Should you get one with a package? And I always take my needle from the left. So this is the last one I used and it was in that position, but I didn't use it very much. So I put it back in the package on the left so that I know that it's, this one is a brand new one. This is the last needle in that pack. Hello, Lorinda, welcome from Hood River, Oregon. Tell me what machines you guys have. I want to know, and I know a lot of you have too many machines to list. So which, which machine is on your sewing table this week? And are you guys going to, are you guys, are any of you doing the Hello Kitty? Or do you feel as though it's helped you to maybe do another project that you've wanted to do? I need to tighten that needle down with my screwdriver because I'm probably going to use a free motion foot when I do the whiskers. That is if I can find the free motion foot that goes with this particular machine. I don't think the needle, yeah, there's no needle threader on this machine. That's partly why I don't use it on set because I have to use my eyesight to thread it. But I did find my really handy dandy little needle threader. Hi, Nikki. Janome 15K quilt maker. A 9042 Janome's in the room. Two baby locks and a brother. Hi, Nikki from Pensacola. Is it hot and humid there today? Cause it's warmer today than it's been. We've been it was we've been getting down to freezing every night. I got to bring in all my outdoor flowering plants, so my dining area looks all floral and rich and lush. Last year, I didn't bring them in in time. It snowed and all those plants died. And then I had to get them all over again. Glasses, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Brother Lemur. One of these days, I got to finish painting my Baby Lock Destiny. 
And I do plan on doing that so I can show you how to use our stabilizers with embroidery machines. And I'm probably going to do some designs that you can uh, follow along with me on. At some point I want to do some embroidery designs. You working on the pumpkin? Is it applique or are you making one of my stuffed pumpkins from four weeks ago? It'd be cool to use uh, the glow in the dark ink that we have and ink fabric with it and then make that into a pumpkin. There's still time. I have been dying to ink or paint on fabric. I'm gonna probably do that next week to some kind of inking project. Give me a thumbs up if that sounds like a good idea to you and what should I do? Should I do something for Christmas or stay with the Halloween theme? I'm, I can't believe I've never done this much of one holiday in a row before. Almost, but not this much. You can't get the, the needle to work. What's, what needle? What stupid needle? <laughs> and if you ever have trouble with something, you've got to just give me a call or, you know, email me with your phone number and I'll call you back so we can figure out what it is. So, but the, the chat just jumped. <laughs> Which needle is it? Okay, give me, you promise that you call or email me, reach out in the school, let me help you. Because if you're having, if you're, if you're not able to sew with a needle, you probably need to take your sewing machine in. And I hate to say that, but the odds are that's it. Or did you try more than one of the needle out of that pack? Because every once in a while, a needle actually is bad. I'm gonna get these. I've been having a hard time finding them, but I found the needle threader. So this is an alternative. And you know, sometimes I say, don't use your automatic needle threader. So this is a nice alternative. It's a handheld needle threader and it has that little hook in it. Boy, this, the light is weird today. That's a really hard thing for a live camera to see. So I now take this from the back of the needle and then you can take the thread through the little hook. <laughs> Which way is it? Where's the hook? I can't see it even with my magnifying glasses. Okay, so the hook is on top. I feel like it would be easier if it were on the bottom. I can do that by flipping it over and using my left hand. I feel like a surgeon. <laughs> Whoops. Now I'm fishing for catfish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I see what you're saying. You probably been, okay. And are you the one with the Janome? I've lost track, Sharon, of what machine you have. If you have a Janome, I know why you can't thread your needle. It's two Sharons. <laughs> Sharon, say hello to Sharon. I can't believe how hooked that is into this, into the cat, the hat on the cat, the cat in the hat. <laughs> Oh, that's okay, so it comes this way. I've officially connected this to the cat. <laughs> Here I go again. This is definitely surgery. I don't want to damage this because I love this thing. Oh, 
Okay, so Sharon, on some Janomis, they have this fabulous needle threader and you, you push a little button and if you use your needle threader on too small of a needle, you will bend that little wire inside of there and they just need to, to put a new one in for you and then you'll be good to go. But remember, and another thing people do is they, they hold on to the thread while using the needle threader and that can also cause your needle threaders to be bent or become bent. If you got really good eyesight, you can bring it down and kind of look at it and try to straighten it out and see if you can't get it to work. The best needle threader ever has been the one that the Baby Lock or Brother Machine released last time where you push a button and it electronically does it because what it does is it, it raises the foot, opening the tension discs and then threads the needle and then it closes them back up and drops the foot. I don't know if you've noticed that if you have a Brother or a Baby Lock machine. Okay, needle thread is threaded. I'm going to now take and place the larger of the two frames beneath the quilt, like that. Top frame is going to go on top and drop inside of the perimeter of the one that's beneath it, like that. And this handle is what you hold onto when you trace a design so if you were to print this out or trace that design using your caterpillar light tablet you could trace the spider web designs using the light and by the way right now the ultras are sold out i don't know if you guys have been watching the news but if you've been watching the news you know that that there's a bunch of ships in our bays, or what do they call them? <laughs> there's products stuck on barges, and hopefully it'll clear up. But if you're wanting anything uh, from Caterpillar or mainly that one, everything else creative feet-wise is pretty good and we are almost out of the stick and tear but it is in production so we're hoping not to run out before too long but I wouldn't wait for items also mostly because people are not waiting they're kind of panic panic ordering right now so if anything's going to cause a shortage on our end it will be that I was thinking about adding sequins to this as well we'll see how far I get I was thinking about putting, putting the binding on and then putting sequins around the edge because they'll reflect the light. What do you think? Do you think I should do some sequins as well? All right, here we go. So I'm just going to do what I just said I was going to do. Take and place the bottom frame beneath. I got to think about where I'm going to start. And I'm going to quilt. I should have I should have done the whiskers first. That's what I should have done. Maybe not. So some of the spider webs, why is that hard for me to say today? Some of the spider webs are going to be the full spider web and some are not going to be the full because they're coming from around the moon. Not that spider webs would be behind the moon, but I just have to decide where, where to start. It's entirely up to you if you do this. You might want to just do one, one big spider web. Let's see. Okay, here we go. For those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know that a couple weeks back, I just started, started saying, here we go. I think I found the packaging on that needle threader. I might have it in my office because I'm trying to source it. So I can bring them into creativefeet.com. So I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up. Which is pretty short. These tweezers are also the best at grabbing little threads. I'm bringing it up, bobbin thread up. Oh, I got another thread coming off a spool. Okay. 
There we go. Here we go and there we go. <laughs> By the way, if you're concerned about the fabric shifting on you, you can go ahead and use our liquid base glue and put little dots on the batting and then lay the fabric on top. I also like to kind of spread the glue out so that it doesn't, isn't a blob of, of it. I'll show you up close a little bit. Although I don't feel the need to do that on small projects because, because of the high level of static cling. So it's like, I can, I can't even get it to come apart. And if you can see as well as I hope you can, you'll see the batting like holding on and grabbing that fabric really intensely. So it's almost impossible to get it to shift. But that word almost may make you want to use a, a bit of our, our uh, liquid based. So instead of safety pins, The liquid-based glue is water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle. It comes out as little drops, so you just do a little drop. Think of that as a, as a safety pin. A safety pin, how, how close would you do your safety pins, or how close would you do your basting stitches? And now you don't need to do either one of those, and you just spread, slide it out a little bit, so it's not a blob. And then you just lay your fabric down over that, and it will dry and hold it in place, and whenever you're finished, it will, you wash it, it'll wash away. If it's not washed, it, well, it's undetectable and non-staining and there's no acid in it, so it won't damage the look of your fabric. Notice that I stagger and always have my back be bigger than my batting and my batting be bigger than the top fabric. That way you never accidentally line things up incorrectly and have to try to add batting into your project. The Octi hoops are also low profile, allowing you to slide beneath the needle, even with a foot on. I have these little channels on all eight sides of the frame to help you with that. You want to not have your hands on top of the quilt, but be like this and rest your arm on the machine, allowing the quilt to move with the frames. Because when we work with the octaves, we don't have to push down. You can actually rest your arms on the sewing machine. And that reminds me of something I made a couple weeks ago. As I have a little elbow rest, so my elbow doesn't get sore from resting against the surface of the table or my cutter pillar, which is always right by my side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And so I'm actually getting cozy, and this is the position I'll be in. I'm going to move the mic a little bit out of my way, not too far so you can hear me. And in essence, I'm kind of like there's people here, and I'm just talking to them, and I'm resting, dropping the shoulder down, and you want to do that. Get your body as rested as you can. You might have to push the machine further away in order to get your body in that resting position, especially if you're gifted with long arms. I am not. God had a sense of humor with me and made really short arms. So my machine will be a lot closer than your machine, possibly, unless you're like me. My daughter actually says I have Tyrannosaurus arms. Not a very nice daughter sometimes. Just kidding. All right. That's the sound my machine is beeping and telling me I do not have my foot down. So I have to lower the foot, even though there is no foot on the machine. I can't remember how to lower the feed dogs on this machine. <laughs> how do I do it? It's not a computerized, well, it has a little bit of a computer in it. I think there's a button. It's been that long. I used to really know this machine well. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave the feed dogs up because I don't really have to lower them. Oh, you don't have to wait while I find them. So, I'm thinking, okay, spiderweb, since I have not done this, 
Did I somehow get the bobbin thread back under? Cut that thread. I must have. I moved the fabric too much and the bobbin thread went back under. So it didn't take right away. But it's sewing now. Boy, you guys are not saying anything. Either that or my chat froze. Thank you for supporting me in the sequin idea. We'll see how it goes. Right now I have my tension on normal and I may change that, we'll see. I haven't used this machine since the last time you guys saw me use the machine. Coming out straight. And I'm gonna come all the way back down again. Looks like I'm skipping stitches. Oh, I don't have my... The thread is wrapped around the needle. That's the risk of using a hand needle threader. And that's what I did, so human error, operator error. That's pretty tight tension. I think I'm gonna lower it. It's currently at four. I'm gonna take it to three. Oh, I wish it had a needle threader. Hey, how's that? Oh, I love it when it threads so easy. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Now my bobbin thread is already up. So I should be able to get away with this and come out. Well, it's amazing how well it works when you don't have the thread wrapped around your needle. Having not ever done this before on quilting, this is my first time. I'm a little quieter when I do something the first time. I can't see it all. I got all this stuff in my way. All right. And it looks like my bobbin thread is coming up to the top still. So I'm going to go down even more on that tension. And that could be that I have my bobbin not in the tension on the bobbin case, which is going to make an ugly backside if I don't figure that out. Okay. This is me being quiet because I... I'm thinking about how to approach this. <laughs> and it's kind of like a, a W. You go down and come up and down and come up. I'm going relatively slow, hoping you can see the needle move, but on these videos I've found that you guys can't really see. The camera can't keep up with the speed of the needle. So that's kind of cool, huh? So I'm going to... I'm thinking, I don't know how I'm going to lock more than one together, so I may just hop around instead. Okay, so I'm going to stitch around the moon because, well, it's already got glow-in-the-dark thread. Okay, so if I now do a full one right here, then I would just, I can't get my toe where I want it on that foot control. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And I'm going to go all the way down. Oopsie, that's not what you're supposed to do on a spider web. So I'm, I just told a fib. <laughs> this is why it pays to have, I guess I could go all the way down. 
So go all the way across. There's nothing wrong with what I did. Oh, well. So having a design drawn on the fabric is helpful. But you know what? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But you, if something doesn't go the way you planned it. And I think going up and down it twice like this is going to make it show up more when it does glow in the dark. This is like so quiet today. All right, now that I know what sewing machine is on your sewing table, what is on the sewing machine? What are you sewing? Am I getting my hand in the way? Let's see. It isn't my hand, it's my hair. I'm trying to make it so you guys can see better. So I'm going relatively slow and moving my hand in a more dramatic movement, which creates a longer stitch length because I am the feed dogs without a foot, despite the fact that my feed dogs are up right now. Without a foot, I cannot, the, the sewing machine will not feed the fabric. To show you that, I don't want to ruin anything, let's see. So hands off and then I sew and see how it just stays there. Panties, Lorinda, you wrote panties. That's awesome, I'm proud of you. Did you learn stretch and sew when stretch and sew was a thing? Are you using the sequins and ribbon foot to sew the elastic? Because it sure does make that easier. Okay, here I go. Double U's. Lots of W's. Big sweeping W. I forgot how hard it was. Okay, I, I'm using my speed control because my toe was wanting to push harder I'm getting uncomfortable like a cramp in my foot from not going as fast as full speed so keep that in mind if you're ever getting like sore from your foot not pushing down speed control will allow you to put your foot down and not have the machine go too fast take that from someone who sewed for seven hours straight at a show so you can see this is a relatively large pattern that I'm sewing on a regular sewing machine with a small throat area. Whoopsie. Ah. Did that work, Sharon, the flying geese? Did you get that all worked out? The liquid-based glue is your best friend for complex quilt designs. W, and I just kind of scoot. I use my thumb and I scoot the bottom frame and then I pull the top frame into the corner. And so that's what my non-dominant hand, non hand is in charge of, is keeping those two frames together. Ws, spiders, spider webs. <laughs> and then you kind of deliberately drop down because that way you don't have to st you don't have to go all the way up and come back down again It'd be really hard for anyone to really see that unless they're one of those people looking for your flaws So what I'm steering with is this right here, this little handle. That's what I'm using to draw. And why 
it gets easier when the design is smaller is because, well, your fingers are shorter and they don't have to lift up. Making sure you're not laying on the quilt with your right hand either. And you can slow the, the machine down as slow as is comfortable for you. Based on your eyesight, you shouldn't move faster than your eyes can focus as you're going around or you'll just do a bad job. That cool, you guys? I really am liking this. See, now I'm like, wow, we definitely have to have more spider webs. I'm going to just go ahead and tie this one off, though. Okay, give you an idea. Isn't that nice? Look at that. That's so cool. It's called scrundleware. <laughs> Grundleware doesn't sound very sexy. <laughs> you should share in the school, though. If you got a great lingerie pattern, you know, it, the students love to learn about things like that. And if you do that, I could actually teach a segment on doing lingerie. You know, I do know a lot about it. I'm really liking this. This is probably going to end up being an indoor house thing until Halloween night kind of thing. Should I connect the spider webs or just have them be... If I don't have them all connect, it won't take me as long to do this. And then I can get on to showing you how to spider web on a shirt. So what I noticed, and I'm going to show you my observation is that the spider web is the shape of the octagon. So if you start as close as you can get to one side of this and you and you look there, you will head in a straight direction. And so if you notice, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those eight points will help you to actually achieve your spider web without having to think too hard about it. Which also means that you could do an entire spider web without moving the hoop. As long as you can see within the opening, you've got eight points to make yes spider web. Should I try doing a spider? Because I do have a spider on this. I didn't draw that one. Which is why there's no copyright on this. This was a free clip art pattern on... Uh, I figured I didn't need to draw a spider web. It's been done all over the place. Should I have should I have a spider hanging on this one? This is why my shows go too long. I just think it would be good to have a spider one spider. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kind of wing it. We'll see how good I do. I was going to say, should I change the color? No, no, because that is what color the spider is using as its web, right? You like the headpiece? Thank you. I didn't make it, but I did change it. So right here, this little stone is a pin. It has a big, you know, one of those that you can pin into your clothing on. So I added that and I broke off the headband part that goes into your head. And I have these claw clips that I just grabbed around and it holds on really well. This is what I'll be on Halloween. Except for I will do more elaborate makeup on my face. So. One spider. We, we, we won't be doing more than one spider. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> okay, I should bring the bobbin thread up, but I'm not going to because I can get away with it. Scooting down. And now I'm... 
kind of looking at this spider. That spider. As I do this, we'll see how good I can do. And I think I can do a better job if I turn it this way. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I was, I, I, you might be thinking we should do a black, but I'm like, well, he's going to glow in the dark if I draw him. You can see the bobbin thread is still coming up. I really should check my bobbin. I'm going to go less on the tension on the top still. All right, I'm actually I'm actually going to fill him in too. So he has a full-size body. Remember I said I was using the Invisifil bobbin thread? So see it's too thin for this thick thread. This thread does drag through the tension. So I'm doing straight stitching and just going up and down. Oh gosh, my fingers in the way. If you're just joining us today, these are the octahoops which let me draw with my sewing machine. There's another frame beneath and the two frames lock together. So this hand's job is to bring the frames together, which is why I tend to get in the way when I do things like this. But I'm steering with my dominant hand and you can use either hand with the handle. So this is the, now we'll do the spider's head. Looks like it needs So this is through a quilt, which kind of shows you that you can, yes, you can embroider on a quilt through the batting on a regular sewing machine with this. And the reason I can go back over my line is because I have my elbows down. With other forms of free motion, your elbows are raised up and it makes you unstable. <laughs> that sounds funny. I don't know, I was trying to quilt the spider, but I was so unsta I'm so unstable. Made that leg too rounded. Doing my best here without having it already drawn. If I already had it drawn, it'd be easier. Oops, and this needle is pretty big for this. An 80-12 needle would be easier for this type of quilting. All right, I went, I went into the silent mode because I'm thinking All right. <laughs> I don't draw spiders every day. Woo, my arm got sore holding onto the paper. I'm just going to do it and try to mirror what I did on this side. I have, I don't know, how many spiders have I drawn in my lifetime? Probably not that many. How many spiders have you guys drawn in your lifetime? Write it in the comment. If you're catching this on the live. If you're not catching it on the live, we still love to see your comments in the description below the video. All right, there, so there's my spider. <laughs> this spider is responsible for all the spider webs on this project. So sliding down. And I'm going to do another spider web over here. Mm. 
Zero, huh? <laughs> you made some earrings and a necklace? Cool. What'd you make them out of, Dina? Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can use the OctaHip to plot out your spider web. So you can go all the way down. I can, I'm going to go, okay, uh, an inch away from there so I don't make it too big. And so I, instead of looking here, I'm looking here. And I'm going to draw in that direction. And having that as a focal point makes it a lot easier to manipulate. I'm trying not to put my hand where I should so you can see. Whoops, I don't need to move it. I forgot. Come back down to the middle. Can't really tell where the middle is because I moved the hoop. Okay, now I'm back. Okay, so now I know that this is the middle because, well, that's the other part of the octagon. I'm going to get my hand out of there and quilt without the handle so I don't have to lift it up. But you could move it if you wanted to and if you wanted to keep using it. I'm definitely better with it. <laughs> definitely better to move the handle. Ugh, so much better with it than without. Oopsie. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the next inside curve of the octagon shape. I'm trying to think of how many things I've made using the octagon octi hoops as the actual pattern. Because we use this to make the fabric bowls. Remember? Looking there, heading in that direction. Now I'm looking at this corner, heading in that direction. And it's okay if you're not exact, because spider webs aren't. Sometimes they got their little string connected, and sometimes they don't <laughs> connect. I think I'm going to start in the inside this time and end up on the outside. W's. Looking where you're going, not where you're at. Looking where you're going, not where you're at. Looking to the next string. Looking at the next string. It's a good idea to practice drawing this on a piece of paper first. Remember, this is the feed dogs are up. So it's moving a little more than it would if I lowered them. But it doesn't affect the movement of the fabric on the sewing machine at all. Spider webs. Oops, I moved the hoop again. Darn it. <laughs> That's habit. Okay. It's all right if you move it. I've already drawn the, the hard part, which is the... The overall shape of the spider web. Whoops. Oh, take your foot off the pedal. <laughs> I think that's the number one thing people do when they first get these is they keep the machine running when they let go of the hoops. Free motion does require practice. It does require that you want to do it bad enough. So that you try and practice. These are good little projects to practice on before you go to a full-size quilt. Okay. And cut. So now I'm going to evaluate it. So here's the thing. I could stop doing spider webs right now and bind this because you can quilt after you've already bound 
your your actual project i want to see what the back looks like because the bobbin wasn't in there well enough but you can see the stitch quality is nice this is just my knot i need to cut that isn't that nice How do you stop the fabric from jumping? So the fabric does jump a little bit more when you're in the, I'm not on the, I was on the wrong camera. So as the needle goes into the fabric and then it comes out of the fabric, it does kind of pull on the needle or the needle kind of lifts it up because of the, the bump on the backside of the needle. A stretch needle will have less of that because it is a flatter needle, but you're more likely to break it. And part of the reason the, f the fabric was bumping more this time than every other time you've watched me is because I am sewing all the way across the, the center where I try to normally keep my needle around closer to the hoop rather than in the center of it. So when you're in the middle of it, well, it's going to be more dramatic. And my feet dogs are up because I can't remember how to lower them on this machine right now. So with the feet dogs up they do tap on the back side and this thread is significantly thicker than the bobbin thread which is also causing a little bit more lift this is the non-stick needle as well so my stomach is just like growling can you guys hear it it almost sounds like my dog is growling in the other room sounds angry I'm really liking this. So let's give you guys a close-up look at it. What do you think? You guys want me to do a little more? Want me to take... Gosh, my stomach. <laughs> I'm embarrassed by how loud it is. I'm going to see if I, I'm going to lower the feed ducts and then I'm going to put a foot on. So Because some people want to see me use a foot. If I can find the foot for this machine. And this is how we get a reduction in the lifting. I have over 30 sewing machines and most of them come with a free motion foot. So they should be really handy, but I try not to use them. Or these. <laughs> All right, where are you? Well, that's one way to find your seam ripper. I just have to think. I have lots of little places I put things so I don't lose them. Do you guys have safe places you put things and then you can't find the things you put there? I'll give you this to look at while I look in one spot where I think it might be. It's upside down for you, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Isn't it cool?
Well, I looked in all my little hiding spots and I can't find one. So, if you watch, I think it was last week when I was, or when I was embroidering the face on the cat. Last week, because when I, I did most of the embroidery the first week, and then the second week, I kept having my thread loop and thread shredding above the eye of the needle. And then I put the foot on and all the problems went away. So if you have any difficulty, that's what I suggest is a foot. And it's called a free motion foot. I got to find that. I know I have a whole bunch of them. I did find five walking feet, which I barely ever use. So that was funny. I gave it a try. I know where the one is for the other machines. In my mind is still searching. Here's the thing, I had it in a cute little box, but I put all my buttons in that box now so that my buttons are in a cute place. I don't know. So the question is, do you want to watch me do a few more spider webs or should I stop doing the spider webs and do the binding and then do the t-shirt? And it is 312. If I bind first and quilt second, it also shows you that I'm proving that you can do that with our Octi Hoops. I still have to do the cat whiskers. This is a democracy. You guys have to vote. Voting is required. You remember that, Sharon? Well, now you know. All right, so what I'm gonna do is show you what I would do and then actually do it. Since I know I cut the blue fabric well and it is the shape that I want it to be, I still have to figure out how I'm gonna hang it from the door, but um, like I could just do a casing and feed a, a little wooden stick through there because I do have some wooden dowels in my possession. I could also just <laughs> Do a little circle that you use for um, curtains and for making blinds. They sell them in the fabric stores. They're just circles. And just put a, a couple circles back there and hang it on my screen door, which to me, that's not the most important thing. It's more the, the meat of the project. So I'm going to square this or cut this fabric straight. And before I do that, I glue. I use the liquid base glue all the way around the perimeter so that the top fabric won't move. And I don't cut yet. In case I didn't say that. <laughs> I think I said it. And in this case, I am putting it on the fabric. And I, sp oh, you probably want to see me do it. So as I lift it up, which I already smoothed it out and made sure there's no puckers. And then you just kind of brush it like that. And that's not gonna move on me. And I did just recently show you guys how to do binding, faux binding with miters. It's um, this project, the, the flower made out of the Dresden plate design. So you can see the binding around that. So look for that image. And that's like a three-part series as well. Because we did the applique, um, cutting out and laying it out. And then I stitched some of the applique the next week. We did the quilting. And then the next week we did the binding. And that was done. The binding was done before I finished all that quilting. I st still didn't finish all that quilting. I can't wait to actually be done with that and use it in my home. So 
So just going around the edges of this. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the fabric and the batting to be connected 100% of the, the perimeter of the quilt. That way nothing can shift. So I'm just drawing a line underneath there. The batting is getting stuck on the nozzle. <laughs> so I just pull it off. This is why it's good to have a damp cloth in your sewing room. Whoops, I have this ironed wrong. So you can see this is folded under. Oh, terrible. But you can just pull it out and put the glue on there and it will allow you not to have to iron it right now to make that lay flat. Nice. I'm leaning toward using the circles or the rings. which I was thinking I could just grab one really close and really quick and show you. I got lots of little things like little baskets like this to put things in. Do you guys have things like that? I used to have rings in here, but I organized myself. Now I got to find out where I put them. My drawer is full of little containers like this. These are weights. This is how you weight down fine gowns to keep the hemline from blowing in the wind. It also helps it drape on the body when you have a fabric cut on the bias or draped for a bias cut. I use that for my daughter's wedding dress. Whoops. So if you end up getting some of this on top, you just wipe it off with a damp washcloth. Okay. I am going to finish this though today. I just want to show the t-shirt, how to make a hole uh, into a spider web on a t-shirt. I don't have a t-shirt to use. I looked and I just couldn't spare one of my shirts. <laughs> so I have some stretch fabric so that you can see how it will handle it and how to follow what procedures to follow in order to make your t-shirt have spider webs. One of the things I'm going to use for the binding is rat tail cording. Have you guys ever sewn with rat tail cording before? If you don't know what it is, it's a satin cord that's really consistent and it's fabulous for small piping projects or projects where you want to use small piping. Come on, almost done. And I would have already done this. However, in order to show you all the steps live, I can't do the stuff before. And that's what this show is all about. Complete transparency. Everything's done live. The only thing I didn't do live was show you like taking all the stabilizer off. That's already done. Now I'm going to use the satin edge foot. 
Hi, Tinkerbell. Sorry to disturb you. The satin edge foot's going to help me to sew really close to the edge of this fabric over the binding. So it's designed to ride off the edge, but it's also designed to ride off the raw edge. I might have something. Yeah. It's just, we were just taking new pictures for the website. So this is the foot that I use for this. So you can ride off the edge of a raw piece of fabric, off the edge of a fabric on top of another, and on top of this, on top of that. So, but what it does is it, the guide on the foot is adjustable so that you can adjust your needle to be however close or far away from the edge for top stitching or edge stitching as well. And I have the glow in the dark thread on. I'm just going to leave it on. Just need my snap on adapter. I took it off. Where'd I put it? So this would be considered a little brother or a little baby lock machine. And I prefer to use my machine snap on adapter. Hey, Amy. So you were right last week. I was using the teal thread for the whiskers. I played it back and watched it and went, she was right. I should never question Amy. Screwdriver, where are you? You never heard of rat tail cording, so I'll I'll be bringing it out in a minute. But what I really want to do is I want to make sure that the fabric doesn't slip on me because we're going to create a binding that's as thick as the layers are all combined together. Using a straight stitch, I'm going to move my needle to the center so I can get my needle really close to the edge. So you choose how close to the edge you bring your needle down and then the guide, you adjust the guide so that it's lined up with the edge of the fabric so that the guide wire is off the edge of the fabric. And that wire is what I'm referring to that is on that. So that wire sits right off the edge of the fabric and it kind of hits a wall and it won't let you go up onto the fabric as easily as it can without it. Yeah, Amy, so all week I wanted to tell you you were right and I was wrong. <laughs> so now we're using the feed dogs. And I can go longer on the stitch length. Go to three and a half so it doesn't take as long. Watching the front of the foot, not the needle. And that's another thing when I'm doing the free motion, I'm not looking at the needle. I'm looking where I'm going instead. Is there something stopping it from feeding? Now I'm coming down to the corner and I'm looking at the corner and I'm going to stop the distance I am away from the edge from that end and stop the needle down. Lift and turn. I think it needs, oh, I can't remember how to use this machine at all. Wow. This is how I'm holding the quilt to keep it from, from getting, from moving and to stop making sure it doesn't get caught on anything instead of sitting like this, which is what a lot of you uh, have been forced to do with other feet. So we're trying to lift it up to prevent it from stretching out of shape. And my elbows are, this fur is making it harder because <laughs> it's very heavy and it's pulling the weight of the quilt, which is why my hand is back here. I'm kind of more lifting. I'm not pushing down or spreading the fabric out of shape. Just kind of being in a table and helping this heavy cat. It's got a fat cat on here. <laughs> Keeping my eye on the front of the foot. Make sure there's no 
separation between the guide and the fabric's edge. Oh, the feed dot or the speed control is reduced. I mean, this is taking too long. There we go. Now we're speeding. Amy, I don't think you've forgotten anything yet. You got great memory. Oop, one more stitch. Oops. Sorry for making it. You can't see. Your fabric will always behave better with the grain than against the grain. It's starting to get hot in here. Been afraid to turn the air on for Tinkerbell's sake. She's so small. <laughs> and I didn't cut this fabric. I tore it. So there's no real edge on this side for the fabric or for the foot to feel. I don't think I released the pressure either. Do any of you remember how to use my machine? <laughs> this is what happens when you have over 30 sewing machines. It's just not feeding as well as it should be. But I haven't serviced it in a while. In fact, I was going to oil before the show started and I didn't get to it. Poor thing. I'm sorry, sewing machine. I've got to get my other machines into the mechanic. They're, they were supposed to be seen last year. None of you are asking any questions. Getting to the end. Two more sides. I hope you're able to see as I'm carrying the weight of that kitty cat. <laughs> It's almost like having a stuffed animal stuck to the top of a quilt and then trying to sew with it. And this is what I talk about a lot. If you put your hand in front of and behind, then the fabric wants to bounce off the foot. So I really should be coming from the side. I'm just trying to not block you. I think you can still see. And if I spray starch this fabric first, it would help as well. There's batting fuzz flying all over. Okay, the last side. Yes, I do reduce pressure when working with thicker fabrics. If you go too low, then you, it may not feed at all though. So you gotta find a, a balance there. And I really feel like it's too low. Stitch length can be too long as well. If your stitch length's too long, you can get puckering or gathering almost. Do you guys know how long it's been since I used this machine? Amy would remember. <laughs> you are the one with the memory. I'm trying to remember what what I was using this machine for last time. I hate to say I have a favorite machine, but this one's right up there with one of my most favorite of machines that I've painted. Okay, we decided orange, right? Um, yeah, I think you guys voted orange. I don't think we voted on this. <laughs> Did we vote on this? I don't know. I can do something really fast. 
let's see. Whoops. So this is rat tail cording. And it's very luxurious. This is the eighth inch or two millimeter. Is that what they say? And you can see where this one was made. Made in the USA. That doesn't say the measurement. But if I remember correctly, it's like a two millimeter, two and a half millimeter tops with, there is one that's a little bit smaller than this. They may also call it eighth inch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the edge of the quilt. So I can either have some of it show or we can have us use a blanket stitch and have this, I'm gonna just do what I wanna do, how's that? I'm gonna do what I think I should do. So I'm gonna cut now and it's the kind of thing that would be faster with a rotary cutter but I'm gonna use my scissors. Oh, did I have the butterfly machine for the butterfly embroidery? I don't remember that. That would have been smart. This is always a fun stage because it's like <gasps> almost done if we're squaring it off. I'm starting to have a lot of UFOs because I almost finish and then I go, I'll just finish it later. How many UFOs do you have in your sewing room? And if you don't know what a UFO is, it's an unfinished object. Do you guys want to see close up me cutting this or is this adequate? I know I promised you that I would have the Creative Feed Extensive up by the summer and now that it's fall, I clearly failed to achieve that. I apologize for that. Know that I have not forgotten that I need to do that. We should have the sewing machines on our site soon, the ever sewn sparrow machines. And let's see. See, I'm given homework job homework projects from my son on things we need to do for the website. So I have a, a newsletter to do, a blog. And we are aiming for that this weekend. So I almost did it last week, but he didn't allow it to go through. He said I needed to work a little bit harder on it. <laughs> who raised who? I don't know. Do any of you have a child that won't let you ever do anything halfway because you taught them never to do anything halfway? two and seven how many do i have right here one two three four five i have five right here this has to be done before halloween By the way, I did take a picture of the cat's face and put it in the school right on the uh, link to the video inside of Fabrically Speaking Live group so that you can see the cat's face is glowing. And, I, and it would glow a lot more if it was really dark, dark. It was kind of dark in, in, my, in here when I took the picture. Yay, that wasn't too bad. What do you think, guys? 
Wouldn't that be a fun pillow for a kid's bed too? Something like that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go around with the satin edge foot first. Should I do that? Nah. I'm gonna use the pearls on piping foot. Hi, Cindy. Good evening. Since you said tonight. Hi, tonight. Sometimes I know you're answering questions that I said and, and they make no sense 20 seconds or five minutes later when I read it. All right, so where do you put the end? I get that a lot. Where do you start an end of a chord? Well, you wanna put it somewhere where the eye isn't going to fall. So someone would actually literally have to try to find the end in order to find it since the cat is the most dominant element if we don't put it near the cat we're better we're more likely to not see it if we put it at the top well people might look at the top to see how it's hanging on the door so i'm going to put it and i don't start on a corner and start just in from a corner and so that's my decision. I'm going to take and right now I have the green ish color. Whoops, the cord just fell out. All right, here we do this again. You want to have, you're going to waste some of the cording, so just accept that and have it extend out past the back of the foot. Come on, get under there. And there's a tunnel on the bottom of this foot that keeps the cord centered to the needle. There's a washer on the snap-on bar that allows you to move it left and right. This foot is sold separate, or you can buy it as a set. So what you've seen so far is me use the satin edge foot for the edge stitch, and now I'm using the pearls and piping foot for that. And both of them are included in our educational special, which also has a 208 page workbook on a flash drive or printed, and also a video, two hour video that supports the feet. So this is one of the options that you can find at Creative Feet. This is the foot that I'm showing now. And it has a tunnel that it has a unique shape, a patented foot, by the way, and that washer that slides left and right. Makes it so that if your needle is swinging, and this is the rat tail cord, well, let's just use the rat tail cording. So if my needle is swinging and it's catching it in one swing, well, you could take the foot off of your machine, slide the washer to the other side, and then what it does is it moves the cord over so that your needle is falling where you want it to over the cord. When we do the sequins, we'll use this foot for sewing the sequins. Now, should I do the sequins now? Well, if I sew them in a bit, it's okay. Otherwise, if I wanted it to be really close to the edge, I would do the sequins before doing something bulky like that. And these are three feet that I invented over 30 two years ago. Nashville, I had fun there. So now I'm using a zigzag. Do I want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little conversation that I have with myself. And I'm taking my width to five. I'm going to go even wider than that. This machine goes to seven, I'm gonna to go to six. So one swing is gonna catch the fabric and the other swing is going off the edge. And I'm gonna shorten the stitch length. So I wanna see more of the glow in the dark thread and I really should have it in the bobbin as well. I don't think I wound a bobbin a bit. 
last week or two weeks ago. So the what I'm aiming for is to have the cording be on there, but and the and one swing of the needle go pat to go past that stitching line that I sewed. And you clearly Based on the position of the cord, I am not having to hold it or guide it. My hand is able to guide the fabric and the foot takes control of the cording. That stitching line also serves as a stay stitch and prevents the fabric from stretching. I'm able to go faster. Oh, it's so dark over there, isn't it? Can you even see it? Well, that should help it glow in the dark. Does that kind of glow in the dark right there? <laughs> Ooh, Halloween. Whoopsie. So this is my hand positioning for this. And I kind of try to find a spot on the sewing machine to focus on once I know that I have it in the line so that I don't have to look there at all. And if you get your lock your right arm in a position on your sewing machine table and you let the quilt go into your fingers and you use this as a guide, well then there's even less watching. So you, you won't feel the need to to scrunch over and watch that sewing machine needle moving, which causes a lot of upper back and neck issues. Here we go. So can you imagine trying to look at that needle swinging? You can't even see it because the camera can't keep up with the speed of that. This is the same color as the spider web. This is another project where you use all three of the creative feet and the octa hoops together. This is a great thing to learn, even if you don't use this particular pattern, but if you at least use each one of these techniques on something like this for the holidays. You can take designs out of any coloring book and print them out from the internet as well. So now I'm coming all the way down and I'm going to hop back a little bit and lower the needle, lift the foot. Come around. Now I could have done even a shorter stitch length, but what you can see here is that it does cover all of the all the layers and the batting. So that is fully locked in and secure as any other binding binding would be. Now I gotta watch it because the foot has to ride over that. So Oh, God, I hope you didn't see my tongue stick out <laughs> when I did that. Just kind of moistened my fingers to help it through. And you can see it's not feeding. So I'm going to lift. What's going on? Is it on the feed dogs? So in this case, I generally increase stitch length, make it longer for a few stitches. <laughs> well, that's a mm -hmm. habit I do. It's fine when my face isn't in there. So I'm going to come back again. Try to get it to look the same. We're not done yet, though. Because this would be too easy. Of course, I do have a t-shirt to do. Find the spot on the sewing machine to look at so you don't go off the edge. It's a good time to ask questions because there's a lot of the same thing going around and I really don't have to concentrate. I didn't pay attention to the stitch length I chose for the bottom. And I think I'm using a shorter stitch length than I did on the bottom. A small brother?
Well, that's kind of what I'm using right now. His brother makes the baby lock, so this is a... This was the Quilter's Choice by Baby Lock. Which I really don't know what the brother equivalent was. The number 740 keeps popping in my mind. That doesn't mean I'm right. Because I've got thousands of sewing machine models in my mind from the years of teaching and being a dealer before I invented the creative feet. See if I can light this better. Definitely need another light back there. I don't know if it's because the glow in the dark thread is kind of muted when it's in the shadows. That doesn't make any sense. Because it's supposed to glow in the dark. Keep your focus on the front. Do not watch the needle. If you watch the needle, that's when you tend to have problems. I should have released the pressure or the tension on the thread. Because when I changed stitches, the tension went back up again. So remember I reduced it a lot on the uh, quilting and I never checked to see that the bobbin is in the tension. Normally I always match my needle and bobbin thread when going on the, on the edge of the fabric so the back and the front look the same. I usually use the same color and weight of thread whenever going on the edge of the fabric for consistency sake. So you can see that the, the trim is just laying there. The foot is steering or controlling the trim and I am guiding the fabric. And I'm now officially sitting correctly, which is centered. Ooh, I hear the machine squeaking. I'm sorry I didn't oil you. Oh, I just can't do it to it. Wow, that was just bad. I'm sorry, sewing machine. <laughs> Your sewing machine is not supposed to squeak, in case you guys didn't know that. Increase stitch length on the corners till it feeds. And then once it starts feeding, shorten it back down again. Pay attention to what it was at. I bought the wrong coconut cream. It's got a bunch of sugar in it. So I figure I'll use it for a holiday dessert. I'm not good at using things with real sugar. So do any of you have an idea of something I can make for Thanksgiving possibly that has coconut cream in it? It actually tastes like a pina colada. Other people in the family don't seem to have a problem with, sh with sugar, but I do, so. I'm not entertaining at my house for Thanksgiving, but I am in charge of the turkey. <laughs> and how that works is I get it all marinated and I'll bring it over to my sister's and then she sticks it in the oven. For those of you who are not in the United States, we're talking about our Thanksgiving, which is the third Thursday of November. And so that third Thursday of November, there will not be a Fabrically Speaking live show because I will be busy with family. Oh, I'm so sorry. I still hear it squealing. If you're wondering what happened, um, it's just the, I didn't oil the machine before I started. And this machine, despite being not used for months, 
it is dry. It needs oil. And I can barely stand to hear it squeak like that. I know it's bad for it. And you're at risk of it seizing on you, and it's still doing it. So I'm lowering the needle. And I'm going to get oil up higher. Should be really quiet. Shouldn't be making bird sounds. <laughs> and if you're thinking that doesn't look that great, just you wait. We're not done yet. Increasing the stitch length. Oh, thank you. Coconut cream pie. Yes, I, I think the whole family would be all over that. And I will have a bite instead of a piece. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. By the way, this is an 8, 0 0.8 stitch length. You, you can't go as short because the cord's so thick. And this is one of the techniques that Carol Ann Waugh uses from the Stupendous Stitching book for binding her quilts. But she does it with the shorter stitch length and she does it correctly using the, the same color thread in the needle and the bobbin. However, she has you hold onto the cord and you can see that you do not have to hold onto the cord. She just didn't know. She knows now. She also called this the couching foot, even though it's not. I mean, this is couching. Do you know what couching, couching's definition is? Because our sequins and ribbon foot has always been known as the couching foot. But you can couch with all three of the creative feet. I think it's the hand wheel area that's squealing. Time to take all the machines apart, line them all up on a table, and just service them all. Oh, God, that's horrible. I got this little headset in my left ear, so I can't really tell where the squealing is coming from. Didn't I say the fourth Thursday? <laughs> Did I say the third Thursday? Uh, Amy. <laughs> You are right. There's something that happens on the third Thursday that I that always trips me up on that. Oh my gosh. Squeak, squeak. So now I'm cutting that beginning short. Yay, almost done. And I'm coming all the way to the... Oh, you can hear the squeak. I just heard it. It's definitely up in the needle area. Ah, oh, I didn't mean to say the third. So in other words, on Thanksgiving... I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. I will not be live on that day. I will take that week, that week off from uh, going live. My idea is to have something filmed that I can play when I'm not live. If I can get it done before, then there will be a kind of show, maybe a, a best of show. All right, so now I'm going to sew a straight stitch all the way around, moving the needle position so that it's right next to the cord. And 
And this just kind of gives it a more professional look. with the needle down lift and turn you could stop right where this is at you know before doing the straight stitch if you want but if you want to take it to the next level this is full speed this machine's slower than my other ones Sorry, machine. Vroom, vroom, vroom. The neat thing about this is because the cording is in there, I'm really not steering. So. I'm able to go really fast, and while I'm sewing, I'm reading, and none of you are posting anything. There's a couple times where the thread came off the spool a little weird. So, but you're not going to see those flaws in a minute. Increase stitch length when it doesn't want to feed. Forgot to change camera, so you got to see me lick my fingers. Sorry about that. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. I'm going to change to orange thread, and I'm going to go around again with the cording without not using this stitch. And it will smooth out any of the inconsistencies in the stitch below it. Oh, God. Still haven't done the whiskers. Can't forget. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had the camera on the wrong thing. Okay. Back up. Now I'm going to change to the orange. It's not Halloween if we don't use orange, right? That's how I feel anyway. Okay, I really should have a bobbin. That matches. Don't I have my bobbins? There they are. <laughs> I'm just gonna switch. I'm just gonna use my deco bob so you don't have to wait. This one's good enough for this project because it's not that important that it be absolutely perfect. I still really want to ink fabric and have it be an entire project or paint on fabric using a f paint that has the consistency of ink so your fabric is still soft and have all the pieces be something you 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 paint and then you cut it out and then you sew it into something so the entire project is done using your own creativity 
Does that sound fun to you guys? Where's the end of this bobbin? Oh my goodness, where's the bobbin? Where's the end? Wouldn't be a, a Thursday if there wasn't batting fuzz flying around in the air. Am I gonna have to widen the bobbin? Oh, I got it. Yay. And I can feel that, that tension's really quite loose on this machine. So I am going to clean the fuzz out of the bobbin case. Didn't I do this last week with another machine? I think I did. All right, it's, it's clean. So let's just put some oil down there. Anywhere metal meets metal and moves. I know you want the foot down. Now you're gonna say there's no thread in the bobbin. That's what was squealing. It's not squealing anymore. All right, happy machine. Live TV. <laughs> don't put it off. You don't want your, you know, if the next step from squealing machine you know what comes next? Anybody want to guess? Tell me what comes next if your machine is squeaking and you don't oil it. What is the next stage? Come on, you guys. All you're doing is sitting there. You should be able to type. It's called seizing. The machine will lock up on you. Metal, wherever metal meets metal and moves, if it doesn't have lubrication, it will eventually start shaving the metal of the part next to it. So this time I'm going to end over here so I have a different ending. And I'm going to switch to a blanket stitch. Yeah, and the machine will stop forevermore. Oh boy. I don't know if I know how to get to the stitch. My, my, oh gosh, I remembered. 32 on this machine is the stitch pattern. Now this is a blanket stitch, you guys, so it's gonna sew some stitches. And I'm going all the way to the widest width. Can I do that on this machine? I may not be able to do it on this machine. Is there a mirror? Oh, I have the wrong stitch on. <laughs> oh my goodness. How do we clear? Turn it off. I think I'm just going to use this stitch. So let me go wider. It's something you definitely want to test first. So this is not my big bad machine that lets me do just about anything. And the stitch I was wanting was the shell tuck stitch, I think. So I'm using a blind hem stitch instead, which is going to be a more common stitch for all of you anyway. It's 
it's more fair. And I went longer on the length, so I got a length of four on the how often it goes over. So one stitch is cutting is going over the and you can see a messy area and now it's going to smooth that out. It sounds violent. And that's because the needle is going through this thickness. But you can see how nice that looks. You have that straight stitch, the zigzag stitch, then the that, and then the rat tail cording sits on the edge and it looks like, wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, on older Berninas and any machine really before they came out with what they, oops, the thread just broke. So they came up with what this, this term called self-oiling machines, but they don't self-oil because oil doesn't come out of your imagination. Oil does not appear from nowhere. The oil must be put into the machine. And what it is when, when they're using that term is there are places in the machine that have felt pads. You know the little round donut felt that you put on your machine and then and then your spool goes on top of it and helps it spin? They're kind of like that, but they're thicker and you fill them with oil. And then as your machine sews, it sucks oil out of those felt pads and eventually they get dried out. So once a year, you really should be taking your machine in for a sewing machine mechanic to go through the machine and resaturate all the felt pads. And the reason I say a sewing machine mechanic is because there's actually a pad that's hidden inside of a part that you would not be able to see. And if you don't replenish the oil and have a mechanic look at it, sometimes the oil can become rancid and get sticky and make your machine uh, start malfunctioning in weird ways. And you're not really aware that that's what's causing it. So... Sometimes you just need to take it into the doctor and have its checkup. And it's very important not to use WD-40, not to take a, a bl that, that it canned air and blow into your machine because all you're doing is blowing stuff in deeper into the machine and eventually it won't, your machine just won't work. So... And if your machine has computer components in it, uh, the sewing machine company started making their own screws and their own screwdrivers so that you can't use a, a, another screwdriver to open up your machine. And they hide screws in very creative ways so you can't even see them. So you, you might be able to get a certain depth into your machine, but at some point you just can't. And that's to protect you from having an unauthorized dealer who wasn't trained on your machine go into your machine and actually mess it up so that you think you need a new machine and then you buy a sewing machine from them, which this kind of stuff behavior did used to happen more than you might want to think. That's why when I say you buy, you don't buy a sewing machine, you buy, you marry a dealer. That is what I mean by that, that you, you're in a relationship with the person you buy that sewing machine from. So you better like them. If you don't, then just find another store. All right, enough of that. Here we go. So I gotta tie a knot. Whoops, this machine is not the machine I usually use. So sometimes I like sit there longer to get it to tie a knot. Remember the foot's got the cording. I'm steering the quilt. Let the foot steer the cording. And it's getting pulled by the spool. This is definitely a 9014 needle, no thinner. You'll break a needle if you go thinner. Boom, but a boom. Oh, it broke again. <laughs> wow. Can't go fast doing this. Bummer. 
Ask questions, you guys. I gotta thread the machine again. So apparently, going really fast through all of that is too much for this thread. Because it's, it's slicing the thread is what's happening. Well, I didn't, I don't like having thread my machine this often. Yes, the right dealer becomes your best friend. I love all my customers. It was heartbreaking to leave them when I left California for Arizona. Some of them were very upset with me. And I was young, so I didn't really think it through all the way. I didn't realize how upset people would be that I moved. I was just trying to find a better place to raise my children. I ended up apologizing for a while. All right, I'm going to go slower. Because it's better to sew slower than have to stop and keep tying, re-threading. I feel like there's a cutter somewhere that's slicing the thread. I used to have a a cutter on this machine that's stuck on the machine so I didn't have to use scissors and I'm looking to see is it still there? I don't know what's happening. There was a, another thread getting caught. Okay, so it's starting to not feed through easily because of the weight of the cat. So once again, I'm just kind of helping cradle the fabric so that, oh, it broke again. Oh no. So this is the wonderful glow in the dark thread. And I didn't have it break at all until I'm doing this. So what that tells me is that, first off, this cord is so dense and it has a overlapping weave. It goes in different directions. So when the, when the needle's going through that fabric or through the cording, which it is going stabbing right through it, the thread is coming really close to the back of the needle. And when the needle goes down, the hook's coming around and it's just chopping the thread off instead of picking up the stitch. And so that's the science. The, the problem is actually happening down below, but it's caused by the trim being that dense. So what might improve that is using a leather needle. However, a leather needle is going to destroy this cord. So it's better just to go a little slower. Maybe a top stitch needle would outperform this needle. I could just test that right now, can't I? I say we do that. Hi, Tinkerbell. You you waking up? Yeah. You're so cute. Yes, you are. Is it four? Yeah. See, the dogs know what time it is. Uh oh. You know what I should do is I should stop and do the spider web on the shirt thing. Because you guys pretty much have seen what I'm doing all the way around, I don't really need to go all the way around. And I don't want to let anyone down because I promised I would do the spider web on the shirt concept and it doesn't take very long. Oh, my needles are already out. But I do want to know if this will work better. I'm sure you do too. just so many needles here. How's that for having the top stitch needle right where I want it? So a top stitch needle has a bigger uh, tunnel on the front and it also has more opportunity, has a bigger eye and it has a, a, a more gradual drop from the from where the thread goes through the eye to where it comes out the back.
it's not coated like the non-stick needle is or the uh, super universal is it is chrome plated so we'll find out time to find out The link to the thread that I'm using is inside the description of the video when we're done. You'll see it inside of there, Cindy. So I'll take you right to it on our website. The eye is twice the length of the Super Universal. I doubt you can see it. It's such a small thing for a live camera to pick up. Let's see if I can help you see. There's usually a way to get you to see. Might be able to see it, we'll see. We will see if you can see. <laughs> can you guys see how that is? The one on the left is double the length of the one on the right. And notice this one has like a, a female figure shape to it. <laughs> like it has a little waistline right here. So these little anatomy differences, this is the extra chunk that allows the hook to have a better chance. I feel like the light is causing an interference in that. You know what? I will take a close-up shot of that and put it in the school to help you guys see that and understand that better. And this is the spool, Cindy, in case you have it. And you can see it's by Wonderfill, which is one of my favorite thread manufacturers. So sometimes the Super Universal is not the best option. The top stitch needle helps you work with thicker threads and this is a little bit thicker than 40 weight even though they say it's 40 weight. Okay, back to this. Don't I have a knot? I don't have a knot on this machine. How did I ever use this at shows? It's because primarily when I'm at a show, all I did was a zigzag and a straight stitch. All right, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could just zoom all the way around now? Wouldn't that prove that you need top stitching needles in your arsenal? It almost sounds like the sewing machine's being broken when you go through that. It's different than going over it. So I just went over it a little bit to help you see the difference. So this is the look when you're going through it, and then this is the look when you're going over it. And I like the look of going through it for this. No one's going to notice my little error there. All for the greater good of teaching, you guys. Have I gotten further without breaking the thread? Nice to not have to worry about that. Come on, Claire, get back in the right spot. Going fast and it's still not broken. Zoom, zoom. Hallelujah. Top stitch needle to the rescue. I swear I'm not breaking my sewing machine. It just sounds like it. 
So if you don't have top stitch needles, now you can see what a difference it makes. That's all I did was change the needle. So now I'm coming down to the corner. This is all gonna glow, that's so cool. Glow in the dark. Oh yeah, sequins. Should I still do the sequins? Is it too much? Oh my goodness, no breaking thread. Look at that. Would it break four times with the other needle? My problem is I keep not looking where I'm going. And so I'm not steering straight. I always so better when I'm not being live. So in case you're not aware, this is a blind him stitch that I'm using. Or is it? This may be the shell tuck stitch. No, it's a blind him. Pointing to the right. This may be the shell tuck stitch because it's doing the stitch in the correct position. On a shell tuck stitch, it catches on the right. It goes, it's so straight and then it goes over on the right. On a blind hem stitch, it's so straight and goes over to the left. Shell tuck stitch doesn't go forward and reverse. So it just moves in a forward advancing movement. Good thing I oiled it after all this. That cat is really pulling on this. Boom. I feel like I changed the width or something. You know how when you use a food processor, you can go pulse or keep it running. This is the kind of thing that works better when you pulse. In other words, you push on the pedal, release, push on the pedal, release. That the inertia of the feed dogs in the beginning of the pushing on the pedal has like a thrust that makes it work better than to just keep it going. Here I'm coming up on where I started. Come on, you gotta catch the cord. I feel like I changed the width to a smaller width. Which wouldn't would not surprise me. I do weird things like that without thinking. I might have thought I was changing the tension and instead I changed the width. Because I don't use this machine enough. We'll know when we get up to where I started. If it matches. So I'm like pushing on the pedal, sewing an inch and lifting and sewing an inch and lifting and sewing an inch. Trying to keep that cord from getting stuck on things because that'll slow you down. And this time I'm going to take this cord and cut it like at a angle. So it kind of smoothed out or becomes comes from a higher point and then drops down. And hopefully this cord will come up on it and you won't be able to see where it stops and starts. If it is obvious, then in this case I will 
go like this and drop it beneath. So you see I just tucked it under and bring it over like that. Now it's going to go through two layers of that cording or two thicknesses of that cording. Several stitches have to bear that. see how that end is now beneath and this is where they overlapped one another and on the top I do have some messiness but that in the whole scheme of things when you're looking at it like this people's eyes just do not fall there All right, so I'm going to sew a couple little rings on the end and maybe one in the middle, or I may just add another strip back here and put a wooden dowel through. I'll update you in the school. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how to do spiderweb on a t-shirt really quick, and we will call this week's Fabrically Speaking Live finished. I'll just lay this here for now. I hope you guys are having fun. So we just have to pretend this is a t-shirt. And it has a really neat texture to it. But you would probably imagine this would be very difficult to sew on. And so is the shirt I'm wearing. It is similar to that. It has like a, a real interesting weave to it and it actually is like a multi-layered shirt so if you were to try this without the octa hoops it'd be very difficult yes a lot of people don't realize you know i've had i've heard conversations of students and uh giggle quite a bit at the response with I change my needle when it breaks and uh, and people actually go it does not matter what needle you use they're ju they just say that they're just trying to sell you lots of needles but really what they're trying to do is make it so manufacturers of garments can can sew them faster and not have them break or become destroyed which is called sustainability so the needle adds sustainability to any project that you're making. So if you don't care if the project lasts a long time, it really doesn't matter. So if if you ever make anything and don't care, there's a drawer here that's open. So if you're making something that matters, like a quilt that's going to be handed down an heirloom, well then you want to make sure you use a batting that's not going to rot. So you don't want to use wool and cotton batting. You want to try for the bamboo or polyester. It, the batting will be there, you know, years and years and years later where the cotton and the wool will rot away. And then your thread using polyester versus cotton and rayon. Well, the polyester thread will outlast the fabric for sure. Now I'm going to trace around my octi hoop here. And you do this with any kind of pen. You just draw like this. Making sure it doesn't shift on you. Am I drawing? Is it writing? Oh, there's no ink. That, that did not work. Time for a new pen. There we go. 
This, the uh, fiber side is the stabilizer. The shiny, reflective, slippery is the release liner. And this is our tree frog stabilizer, or our stick and tear, which has a frog to represent it on creativefeet.com inside of the stabilizers section of our site. I don't know where my big paper scissors are. <laughs> now you could lay this on top of a cutting board and use a rotary cutter because the octi hoop actually is like as thick as a ruler. However, as you rotary cut up, you'll end up wasting some of the stabilizer. Good evening, Brenda. Hello, Angela. I know you said that, but I didn't notice your name was new to the chat, unless it's not, and I just am noticing. Thank you all for joining me every Thursday. I know some of you feel bad, like you're late. <gasps> Hi, honey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come to mama. <laughs> On Tink, uh, Chase, Chase will come. Won't you, Chase? Chase comes. Chase says, I'll come when you say come. This is Chase. They say it's time for you to stop, Mom. It's after four. We know what time you go to. All right, adorable. And Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell? Tinkerbell. When you say come to her, she runs the other way. Unless I go, where's my puppy? Where's my puppy? <laughs> no, you're not catching me this time. So I'm peeling this. Stabilizer off the release liner on one of the eight sides. Gotcha. Whoops. Nope. <laughs> There's he is. You want to sit up here? All right. Then you flip it over and you're going to lay it on the back side of the hoop. And rub it. I know you don't want to be there. You're so cute. Yes, you are. My good boy. No, you're not a boy. You're a girl. Good girl. There she is on her throne. She's sneezing. And but peel it off. And this release liner is not freezer paper. Don't try using it like freezer paper. It won't work. But I do tend to save it. <laughs> it is a nice surface to lay some things on that like glitter and it makes glitter slide back in the bottle easier tinkerbell is elusive she's gone so i'm stretching this until it's taut and I look along the inside edge of that and make sure there's no puckering, that it's nice and the sound of a drum. It's not, it's not good enough yet. I need to do a little more. Would you guys like me to teach you how to make a scarf? By the way, we are working our hardest to get uh, to get our stabilizers all back. I know a lot of you depend on our stick and rinse, and now you can hear the difference. It really does sound like a drum. And then you go like this, not with your Appliquick scissors, and you just poke a hole and start cutting and 
how big is the spider web that you're going to do. You can use the larger frame if you're going for a really big one. And now you have a hole. And you could take this and save it to patch an embroidery and just stick it on that release liner. Then you take your fabric We'll see how well this fabric works because this is significantly stretchier. And I was thinking about using the glow in the dark thread just so you can see the stitches. Where on this shirt, I had my. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I used black thread. And there's a little spider hanging on it, and this spider is an earring. And I hooked it onto the shirt. <laughs> oh my goodness. So if you, you have a shirt, you just take it and you pull the shirt out and you lay it down on top of the stabilizer. So kind of picture this as a shirt, even though it's not. Could be. And then you'd have the wrong side facing the stabilizer. Apologize for all the chase hairs on it. <laughs> and take the foot off the machine. Hello, Brenda. Welcome latecomers. So I'm removing the foot and the adapter. And if I still have the energy after I do this, I will show you guys sequins. Now, it usually sticks better than this, so this fabric must be challenging. So how do I handle a challenging fabric? We're using just a straight stitch. I know this thread needs a lower tension, so I'm taking it down to a three from a, from a four. And I am going to do a basting stitch. See how it just lifted it up? Okay, and I can kind of see through this, through the hole. I don't think you guys can see it. See the little white through the little squares? Everything's little here. <laughs> so I can see the hole and see where the white is. So that's what I'm doing right now is I just want to anchor this to the stabilizer. Not... Not with lots of little stitches, because it's a basting stitch. You can just hop and move over, do a stitch, lift the foot, move over, do a stitch. So the goal is to add support to the sticky that usually is super sticky. So this is um, probably got some like milk bottles in the production of this fabric. That's when I find it is hard for the adhesive to adhere to it. You don't want to be too close to the edge because you want to remove these stitches afterward. I'm going to just cut this fabric. Clearly you can do it with a shirt or I wouldn't have a shirt with the spider webs on it, right? It's also so much easier to use the handle. I don't know where my handle is. So stitch. And then move it. Stitch. And that holds better when you do a one little stitch 
and then jump over one little stitch and move over. I still have the, uh, whatchamacallit needle, <laughs> top stitch needle on the machine. This might be a case where the uh, other needle would work better, the non-stick, but we'll give it a go. Now you cut a hole in your shirt and you want it to be within the perimeter. So you don't want, you don't want it when you sew, well, I'll just show you when I'm sewing. I'll just take it off the machine so you can see. This is what I'm trying to get at. When we're sewing, we don't want to catch the white stabilizer. We're going to sew in the hole and on that raw edge of that fabric. And I found that it worked really good with a round opening instead of making it an octagon shape. But I matched the thread to the fabric, so I think that makes a difference. Now we have a hole. Oh no. <laughs> Where's my handle? There we go. Okay, I should be using the same thread and a needle and a bobbin. And then you, you're going to stitch around the opening first. So elbows down, shoulders relax. Now what we're doing by stitching around that perimeter is we're doing a stay stitch. And it's kind of crazy, and you, you could use a foot if you want. But you might feel, you know, nervous about it when it's, when you're doing that first initial stitch. There's no reason not to go slow for this first running stitch. I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm a little far away from it. Got I lowered the microphone so that people can hear me because one time a lady thought I had a mask on. Pretty neat, huh? So now that fabric is is behaving. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can watch. I also need a sip of water. I'm going to mute and take a sip of water. All right, here we go. Now, just as I did the spider web on the quilt, and I went across and then came back, and I came back again and, and then went this way, we're going to do the same exact motion with nothing in there. So now you can see the feed dogs are, in fact, feeding. See them up, up moving. It may be very disorienting <laughs> to you the first time you do this. And there's no, no reason to go fast when you're nervous. Go slow, you know, take your time. Come up. Now we're going to go back again. And I'm going slow so you can see it because the camera can't keep up with the needle. And then I'm going to go again. And this ends up, now I'm going to do this interesting thing. I'm going to move in a zigzag motion, moving left and right. And that brings all those threads together and makes them behave as one or turns them into a cord-ish looking thing. See that? And it's actually very strong, by the way. And I go around and I'm going to make an X. It's easier for me to have it facing me to know that this is parallel with the line on the machine before I come over and now I'm now I'm aiming for a spot here and trying not to pay attention to all this stuff that's going on and 
when my daughter's wedding was about to happen, all the bridesmaids brought their dresses over to be hemmed and they were all beaded to the floor. And I hemmed their dresses with the octi hoops with no foot. Very powerful product to have in your sewing arsenal as long as you open it and use it and give yourself a break. It's gonna take a little practice. It's unusually shaped. They look different, you know, until they become something you've used enough, you might feel nervous using them. And I'm going really slow. You can go a lot faster than this. If you're thinking about doing this for maybe selling something at a craft show or something, you can go a lot faster than what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make it so that you guys can see the needle and see the feed dogs. Now you see how it's kind of a flower? Oh my gosh, you guys, this is the most fun thing ever. You can do so many things with it, not just spider webs. But since we are doing spider webs, now I'm connecting really good to that, coming over, connecting, going back and forth and connecting. Oopsie. <laughs> Trying to stay focused so I get quiet when I don't do something every day. Now I'm going to come down and go here. See how I go back over to really anchor that thread to that? If you don't, it'll slip on it. And I can't see what you're writing while I'm sewing something like this, but I will check afterward. Now you could go back around uh, and make these strands thicker as well. Coming down again. Whoop. That one slid. And I'm really far from my work, so I can't really see as well as I would like. Come on, there you go. Now, if this were black thread, you wouldn't see at all. You can really have a lot of fun with this, though. Yeah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so I'm I'm like on a big big screen TV, Cindy. <laughs> Then when you go to remove this, well, it's not really attached to anything. The stitching itself is only on the shirt. I did purposely go onto the stick and tear for one stitch just so you could see it. So you can see where I caught right there. Now you can get away with it once in a while and it will, it'll just tear. And really you want to cut the top thread, not the bobbin thread, on a basting stitch. And then you can just pull it out. But I could have gone further. I could have changed, done some stitching in here, like gone like that and then changed color and actually created a flower in a hole. So it is another way to mend. Where are my tweezers? Here they are. Another neat thing that I don't always mention about the Appliquick tweezers is this end is rounded so you can scoop under like that. Another thing that it makes this good for is loosening screws <laughs> when you can't find your screwdriver. <laughs> It works really well. It's 
so there you go you got a spidey web and this is how it looks when it's on a shirt and the thread matches and I absolutely love that I have this shirt because I always feel like I look kind of good in it and I can rely on it to always be the shirt for Halloween as long as you can find it <laughs> and it, I went through my closet like six times and I could not find the shirt and it was hanging right there the whole time so do I have time do you want me to go around with sequins Should I put sequins on it? Oh, why not? One more technique and then we'll call it a day. Are any of you too tired and you need me to stop? As if it matters. Oh, there it is. See, I got used to putting it over here, and then I put it over there, and then I couldn't find it. So this is the foot I'm going to use now. And I found these, well, I buy them in bulk. So got this in New York City on one of my shopping excursions when I went to M Mood Fabric. And, and I thought well it has all the colors of this project so I think I should use it and they may not glow in the dark but they will definitely show up in the light these are metallic so you really shouldn't stitch through the sequin but rather zigzag across if your sewing machine does not have a width wide enough to do that, and this is a six millimeter wide sequin, you need at least a six and a half millimeter wide zigzag to go over or across them, then you use a leather 8012 needle and you can puncture holes right through the metallic sequins and not have it cause a problem. When you put it into the foot, you want to be able to grab and pull like that. So as you're pulling, if you tried pulling with them going this direction, they would get stuck on your fingers as you try to pull. The same thing will happen on the foot. So we want it to just slide through easily. So you cut right up to a sequin. Oop. And then you're able to insert it right into the tube. And wherever you, you're going to begin, you're going to waste about four inches of the sequins. Amy likes it how it is, how it is but I promised somebody I would do sequins. It doesn't matter. It's mine. Pretend I didn't do it and... and uh, you can stop watching right now and then I will not have done it. <laughs> I think it'll be cool hanging on the, with a little sequins on it. Is it because you guys are picturing it on the wall and in a house and you don't want sequins? Back to starting where the eye isn't focused. And now I'm going to use a zigzag stitch wider than the sequin. This machine goes to seven. I'm going to use it. Go all the way to seven on the width. Three millimeter stitch length. This isn't going to take any time at all. Sequins and ribbon foot barely gets used. I have to play with it now and then.
and this would be great if you had a knot stitch. You can also take the thread through a hand sewing needle, pull it through to the back and tie it off. What I want to do is have the guide on the foot rest against this so I don't have to pay attention to it. And I should have checked before I put it on, but... That is not a three length. Ugh. I forgot, this machine has a shorter stitch length, so four is right for it. <sighs> okay, it's lined up right. So I'm looking right here on the side of the guide and it's riding up against the bump. And the length is four millimeters. But that's this sewing machine. I forgot that about this machine. So every time I was like, it's not feeding like it usually does because it's it's not engineered correctly. It's, it's not true millimeters on that stitch length. Are any of you going, I don't like that orange stitch over the sequin. Be cool if there wasn't a bunch of thread covering up the sequin, wouldn't it? So you just go like this, push and wiggle, and all the stitches drop underneath the sequins. And what I'm thinking what's gonna happen is that the sequins are gonna glow. From behind, they're gonna have like a little glow, but you can see the stitch just drops beneath and nobody can see how you sewed it on. Do not touch the sequins. Let them be taken by the foot. You're guiding just the fabric. Make sure they don't get caught on anything. Stop with the needle up, lift and turn. This is one time we don't lower the needle. I get asked that a lot. Why don't you always lower your needle? I don't understand. You're the only teacher I watch that doesn't lower their needle all the time. Just do what I say. Things will work better. Need to get that in the right spot. Ugh, should have checked. I have the microphone in the weirdest position right now, which is making me not see what I'm doing as well as I should or could. But as you can see, I'm not guiding the uh, sequence. My hand's over here helping this chubby, furry kitty get through without getting stuck on things. I'm also making sure that the fabric doesn't start to curl on the side here. Tink is doing another round of sitting in front of me and staring at me. They're ganging up on Mama. All right, so this time I'm going to stop at the right spot so you can see better. Because we want to make sure that the side of the guide is always right against the bump. And that keeps you the same distance away from the edge all the way down without having to really think about it. Now I just have to pull all those threads, push all those threads beneath all the sequins and bring the sequin ends to the back side. I will show you that. And this will be my door. So on the outside of my house, I think if I were going to hang this on the inside of the house, I probably wouldn't have done the sequins. But I got myself some LED lights to go on the outside of my house so that I can change the color of the light bulb. I'm in it. I am looking forward to the kiddos coming in the neighborhood. My neighbor is always showing everybody up. She has this incredible display for every holiday.
But then I grew up in an area in California where it was called uh, Candy Cane Lane. Well, we had people would come from all over the all the states to see our neighborhoods, and every every street had its own topic. There was Candy Cane Lane. There was uh, mat uh, not Maternity Lane, <laughs> Nativity Lane, and pretty much for a month, cars just constantly going down the street. We used to ride ponies in the neighborhood to get around because you couldn't couldn't drive. I mean, I was too young to drive anyway, but we drove we drove our ponies around. <laughs> and weaved in and out of the cars. So that's kind of how I feel like this neighbor is. She's one of those people that, and I think it's awesome. She gets a lot of joy out of it. This is me rambling. <laughs> what? Oh, I said something that made no sense, huh? I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, so then you're supposed to do this. Peel off your sequins. Now this may seem time consuming, and it is. It is time consuming. But there's a way of doing it quicker. So if you have this flipped upside down, there are two little threads that crisscross over this big strand. And what you want to do is grab those two threads, get them separated, and hold on to the cord. It's a little bit clumsy. Come on. Come on. But we really, all we need to be concerned of with is the large cord. So you get a hold of them. And I just have to remember, are the sequins right side up when I do this? It's been a while. Then you should be able to pull with a pin and just pop these puppies off. and get behind them. It goes quick. I can't see that well because it's dark color and I don't have my glasses on. So I think it is right side up. Or you can use your fingernail and pull them off. Once you do that, you cut the little threads short because you don't need them at all to keep the sequins on. And you take the large cord through or thread into a hand sewing needle and pull it down to the bottom. Ooh, I gotta finish sewing this. Hi, Chase. <laughs> He's like, hey, you're uh, you got an you went an hour longer than you're supposed to. Don't you know that we're in charge and you're supposed to do whatever we want? All right. Wow, I don't know how I ever survived without a knot stitch. Okay, so what I'm meaning when I talked about the color changing. So I will take the time to do that. I will sit down because if you don't, those sequins will fall off one day both ends and then you pull it to the back and then you tie a knot with the sequin big threads and or you can take those long threads in between the the layers and then no one can see where your sequin ends are and that is the right way to do it in this case so if this is glow in the dark thread the orange which it is and you tuck and wiggle the stitches beneath which is easier to do when you don't have this thick cord right there. So these stitches will drop beneath the sequins. 
And just pretend I've tucked it all under and all you see is the sequence because the threads are hidden. They're hidden beneath the sequence. When it's dark, the thread is going to glow and it's going to make it look like if you've ever seen somebody with lights on their car and they put lights underneath their car and they drive on the road, it's going to kind of make the sequence glow a little bit. That's my thought anyway. I'll let you know how that goes. But that is the principles behind using the sequins and ribbon foot for sequence. And as usual, this was a lot of different lessons in one project. There it is. I got to pose so I can take a picture. Got my witchy hat on. Nope. <laughs> what do you think, guys? If you like this video, I sure hope that after we're done going live that you will hit the like button. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. I do also have a free online school called Create with Claire Rowley, found at create.clairerowley.com. The links to this and all of the items that you see me using in this video, which was live on October 14th of 2021, and this is episode 39 of season two of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and this precludes another session. Know that the on Thanksgiving, I will not be live. But outside of that, we are live Mountain Standard Time. November 7th. Those of you who change your clocks, I think it's November 7th. That's what the day you change your clocks. We do not change clocks in Arizona. So you're going to need to pay attention to the date and uh, type in your search engine. What time is it in Arizona to know or... If you subscribe to my channel and you hit the bell and you have it notify you of everything, well, the next time I go live, it's going to say what time it is. But your brain may remember what time it is now. So be mindful of that. It's coming up. You guys have to fall back. And I don't. All right. My neighbor will want one of these. If she ever goes down the street, I still have to do the whiskers. But I think I've done enough for today. The dogs are going to bark at me. <laughs> okay, you guys. So now I get my outro ready. I really like that I added a spider. I'll post the finished project inside of the school under the uh, image of this inside of the Fabrically Speaking Live group inside of Create with Claire Rowley. And I will see you next week for whatever I feel like doing because this project will be done. And I love you guys. See you next week. Mwah. Bye.